Hello, welcome back to The Desk Corner. Welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be comparing two very popular papers, the Arches Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper and the Arches Cold Pressed. Now, these are some of the most popular paper for watercolor artists, so a lot of you already know all about these papers, but I do get questions all the time about the differences between papers, and I thought this might be useful for anybody who is still trying to figure out what to buy, because let's be honest, Watercolor paper isn't exactly cheap. I think I'm just going to go over some of the basics before we jump into the demonstration paintings where you can actually see me using the papers and talking about it rather than just sitting here talking about it. But the hot pressed paper is a lot smoother than the cold pressed paper. And so I kind of want to just zoom in because it's hard for you guys to see the texture. If I zoom in really far, you can see this paper has more texture than the hot pressed but they both have a smoother and a rougher side. So this is the smoother side of both of them. Now if I flip them over, there's a slightly less smooth side of the hot pressed and then a really rough side of the cold pressed, which should show up on the camera right now. You could see the texture differences. I really like that there's a smoother and a rougher side to both of these. This is actually the rougher side of the cold pressed paper, and as you can see, I was using some brush strokes, and if your brush is just a little bit too dry, then what happens is you can skip over parts of the paper, like ridges of it. And same thing happened to me here. Some of the edges are not very smooth. So typically I use the flip side of the cold pressed paper, which is still textured, but not quite as rough as this side is. So I think at this point we should jump straight into the demonstration, so I'm not talking forever. I'm starting off by demonstrating the hot pressed paper. I decided to do a very simple like landscape painting for both of these demonstrations to keep it kind of the same and so that they coordinated with each other and I decided to do like a wet on dry technique for this so that I could get some streaks and clouds in the sunset sky. I mixed some carmine and a couple other colors to create more of a peach with some darker pink highlights. Now one thing about the hot pressed paper is I feel like my first layers always dry pretty streaky no matter what and therefore I always have to go in and do a second layer. So I wait for my first layer to completely dry and right now you see I'm on my second layer where I'm really darkening up those pinks and peaches. I'm even going for a third layer here to really just deepen up some of those pinks. I really wanted a deeper pink in certain areas and so I went in with a lot less water and a lot more pigment on my brush to create some of those darker pinks in this layer. And the thing about the hot pressed paper is I feel like maybe it dries faster and so it doesn't take me as long between layers. So I wait for it to completely dry of course, make sure that the paper is not cool to the touch at all before I go in and add any additional layers. Oh, you could see I'm adding some like little rocks in in the background once I finished. And then I started to work on the foreground, which initially was supposed to be snow, but because of the pink tint to it and how the background looked, it almost looks like rocks with an ocean behind it. Honestly, interpret it as you will. I like how it turned out regardless. I used a slightly different pink, less peachy, and more purpley for this part so that the painting was not too monochromatic, but still monochromatic enough that it matched to the sky. And as you can see, I'm really just doing the same thing I was doing before. I'm waiting for my layers to dry and then I will go in and deepen up the colors because I find I always need to do that with the hot pressed paper. So we've gone over that this paper is smoother and there's less texture. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is when you use cold pressed paper, you actually have to use quite a few more layers of water in order to get like a wet on wet technique versus hot pressed paper where it seems like since there isn't so much texture to hold the water, um, the pigment seems to glide really easily across the paper. And I'll explain more when I do my cold pressed paper demonstration, but the pigment is really easy to kind of like move around on the hot pressed paper. That being said, it's easier to get streaks as well. I think the water dries faster too, just because there's less water that the paper can even handle to begin with, but Arches is a good brand and the paper will be able to handle a significant amount of water. You just need less of it in order for the pigment to move around just because there isn't really so much texture. This could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what techniques you like to use and how you work, how quickly you work. 
felt like the painting was pretty dull at this point, so I went in to do another layer. And again, you guys, my layers seem to dry so light on this paper. I think it's even lighter than on the cold press paper I noticed. So I definitely go in and do multiple layers here. It also helps to get rid of that streaky look. I think it looks a lot better with multiple layers, if I'm being honest. If you have trouble with hot press paper, try doing multiple layers and see if it helps you because really I can't seem to get rid of those streaks unless I do that. Once the paper is 100% dry, and I really mean you have to wait for it to dry or else you could really mess it up here, but once it's completely dry, I went in and sketched in uh, my tree branch silhouettes, which I'm going to fill in with fine liners, and that's another advantage of hot press paper. I feel like you can use a lot of media with it, like fine liners go over it very smoothly, whereas with cold pressed, I have a little more trouble getting them to look smooth, and sometimes I mess up a little bit on line details. So I think hot pressed paper is more suited for fine liners if I'm being honest. And also colored pencil goes really well on top of hot pressed paper as well. I'm not sure how well marker goes on top because it might need an even smoother surface, but since fine liner does an okay job, I'm guessing marker would be better on a hot pressed paper than a cold pressed. But my point is you really can use a lot of media on a hot pressed paper, not just watercolor. So if you're interested, in mixed media or if you want to use your hot pressed paper as like a multi-use paper and not just a watercolor paper then it might be a better option for you than a cold pressed paper arches is a really good brand so both papers are great quality and you don't have to worry about anything being lower quality than the other or anything like that it's more just what techniques you'd like to use and what media you'd like to use specifically maybe what look you like to have with your watercolor paintings. I used a lot of different sizes of fine liner here. You could see they're getting smaller as I start to work on some of those branch details. And let me tell you guys, this part took the longest because I really went in and created a whole bunch of branch details and I think it was so much fun to do this. Silhouette paintings are just really, really, really fun to do for me. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, they're one of my favorite watercolor style paintings to create because they're actually quite easy to do. You do a pretty simple background and then a really nice silhouette drawing in front of it and it always just ends up looking good no matter what. You could really do any silhouette that you'd like to. And if you guys are interested in seeing the real-time versions of these demonstration paintings, they will be up on my Patreon with commentary so you could see all the techniques that I'm doing and I'm trying to post as much as I can over there and post all of my real-time drawings and paintings there from now on. So if you're interested in that, the link is in my description down below. So this tree branch on the left definitely took me the longest, adding in all of those details. I think I went a little overboard on the details, but that's okay. I was having a lot of fun with this one and just adding in a bunch of tiny little branches too. And then I moved on to the one on the right, which was going to just be a little bit shorter, but it helped fill out the space on the right really well and balance out the painting a bit. So. I'm just doing the same thing that I was doing for the first one, starting out with the big branches and then just gradually adding more and more medium sized and then smaller branches until I felt like this was filled out and complete enough and the painting looked kind of balanced on both sides. And so I'm going to let you guys just watch the remainder of this painting as I'm almost done with it and then we will get straight into the cold pressed watercolor paper demonstration next. So I thought I would slow this down at the very end of my process here and at the end of the video I will compare both of the paintings that I'm going to do for you guys anyways and show them again. So now we're moving on to the cold pressed paper demonstration. For this one I wanted to do wet on wet for the sky so I put a few layers of water down with my flat brush first, just clear water, then I went in with the paint and I did a similar sky like a sunset. 
I changed up the colors for this one. I didn't want these paintings to be too similar because that would be pretty boring, honestly, and I wanted to change things up a little bit. So I added a couple of different yellows and oranges for this one. I might have created a couple of streaks unnecessarily too in the middle there, but that's okay. We'll just ignore that. I've made sure to fade out the bottom too so it wouldn't dry in like a harsh line either. Once that layer completely dried, I went in to do a mountain range in the background, and let me tell you guys, this was a little bit difficult for me. I felt like maybe I didn't have enough water loaded on my brush because I'm used to using less water with the hot pressed paper, but I'm still used to the pigment spreading around easily. Whereas on this paper, the additional texture makes it harder to move the paint around unless you have the right amount of water on your brush. And being used to hot pressed paper, I definitely didn't have enough water on my brush. Once that one dried, I went in for the second mountain range, which I kind of struggled with as well a little bit, especially because I wasn't really sure whether to darken up these layers or since they're in the background, just leave them light and kind of streaky. I went with just leaving them light and streaky in the end because I didn't want them to become like too dark. But the mountain range in the front, I definitely decided that it needed to be darker. So you'll see me go in with that additional layer with more pigment and really just darken up that mountain range in the front. I decided to try and create some trees that might fade into the background, but then I realized that was a terrible idea because it was just going to mess up the background mountain and I decided to wait for it to dry. And then I went in and started creating some trees that would be in the foreground on top of like a little hill that we're closer to. And for this I used mostly Payne's Gray because I wanted it to look a lot darker and more in the foreground and more detailed. So I used Payne's Gray and I created kind of like a textured area that had bushes, trees, and things like that. So you could see that there's like foliage there and that it is closer up versus the distant mountains in the background that don't have really any details to them. And I'm just kind of creating this pine forest here with a couple of trees closer up as well and darker. So you definitely can still create details with the cold pressed paper with paint. I just find it harder to do it with fine liners with a really fine point. And so I waited for this to dry. I decided the sky was kind of boring. So I went in and created some like fun little clouds that are more formed at the top and less faded out. And I just wanted it to be a little bit more interesting and not so boring in those layers of the sky, which kind of dried pretty light. Again, I didn't really go in for an additional layer on the sky like I should have. I don't know how people paint without doing more than one layer because for me, I just can't really get it to look right on the first. I went in and painted some birds with Payne's Gray to break up the sky a little bit, add some interest. And you guys can see I really got that misty effect in the mountains there. I don't know I was going for that, but that's how it turned out. And so I decided to just sort of leave it at that. And so here's how the painting turned out. I was pretty happy with it, but I didn't like the background mountain ranges as much. And honestly, I felt like it was a little bit incomplete, but I didn't want to mess it up with subsequent layers. So I decided to just kind of leave it like that for the demonstration at least, and see if I can learn from any of my mistakes because those two background mountain ranges didn't really turn out how I wanted them to, especially that middle one I could have darkened up a little bit, but that's okay. Overall, both papers are a great choice. It just depends on what your specific techniques are. Like I did a portrait of a dog recently, a commission on hot pressed paper, and I found it really easy to create all those fur details with the hot pressed paper, but I definitely needed to do multiple layers. And so if you're somebody who doesn't mind doing a lot of layers, hot pressed might be better for you. If you don't like doing a lot of layers, cold pressed might be better for you because really I don't think I can get away with doing hot pressed paper with just one or two layers. It just doesn't work. The layers are too streaky at first and they don't dry as evenly. So cold pressed paper might be the way to go if you're looking to do more simple paintings that don't take quite as long. That being said, I think my painting could have still have benefited from doing another layer, but I was a little bit apprehensive to do so. 
I still liked how it turned out though, let me know what you guys think about it. Also with the cold pressed you can create a very textured painting if you'd like to because I'm showing you guys the rough side here that is just a lot more rough to the touch. So if you're into creating very textured paintings, the cold press might be for you because there's two sides to that one too. But anyways you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful or at least entertaining to watch. Let me know which paper you prefer in the comments down below and uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from this channel, of course. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!